I'm still thinking about that iron brew commercial, but uh, maybe more of that later. Serious issue. Uh, American justice has been on life support for some years now, if we're honest about it. But it's taken the trial of George Zimmerman, of the, of the killing of Trayvon Martin, to prove that what was once vibrant, lively and healthy is now it, moribund, if not completely dead. Look, it's quite clear that the police and state lawyers had no intention at all of charging Zimmerman. They were convinced that the whole thing, of course, was deeply unfortunate, but it wasn't criminal. And that Martin was as much a perpetrator as he was a victim. But then Barack Obama, peace be upon him, did his usual show business, race card. The chattering classes became involved. And when I think about uh, this boy, um... I think about my own kids. Um, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Really, Woody? White liberals in mainstream media screaming for justice, black zealots like Al Sharpton and uh, Jesse Jackson pimping a once noble cause. Suddenly, the case was going to go to court and trial. Zimmerman's name and, and reputation tarnished, libeled all over the United States. Websites were set up calling for the man to be killed. And this Hispanic guy, who we didn't know about, became a, a gutter racist. It was so unfair. And speaking of Jesse Jackson, I mean, he's a good example of the, well, the double standard. His son is mired in scandal. He made anti-Semitic comments that were overheard. He didn't know that. He denies the truth. And he still gets away with it. Reverend Jesse Jackson says he's very sorry for remarks he made about Senator Barack Obama. Jackson made the comments after an interview with Fox News, and he says he simply didn't realize his microphone was on at the time. Oh, well, that's okay then. I know for sure that's not a problem, because he didn't know his microphone was on. Like, imagine... Imagine if a white conservative had given that explanation. Oh, I didn't know the mic was on. Look, you know, you know that if Zimmerman had ever said, done, hinted at anything that smelt of racism, it would have been found out. It would be front page news by now. If he'd used the N word, can you imagine? Using the N word is unacceptable. End of story. But look, if you said it once, at a, I don't know, a drunken party in 1956, as bad as that, as that was, you're suddenly, you're worse than Hitler, and you have to be eliminated from society. It's an overreaction. The only place today I ever hear the N-word is when black people say it about other black people. And please, spare me the, oh, it's irony, it's self-empowerment. No, no, it's racist, said by or about a black person. But then hypocrisy is not new in this context. Do you remember the, the famous Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier fights? Ali was quite light-skinned, you know, and fairly Caucasian-looking. His features were quite European. Joe Frazier was much darker, more African looks. Ali mocked him for being ugly, for looking like a monkey, and the world laughed. Frazier, a far more elegant, humble, and dignified man, was abused by Muhammad Ali, the darling of the white chattering classes, for being too black. If the Zimmerman trial is about anything, it's about race. You know that. We know that. If Trayvon Martin had been white, there would never have been a trial in the first place. As soon as the story came to light, Zimmerman was described, do you remember, as a, a light-skinned Hispanic, as though this was somehow bad and nasty and proved he was a racist. That term, by the way, is completely made up and contrived. I'd never even heard it before. Martin was portrayed as a saint, and now we know he was far from it. Have we not had enough of the, oh, he was such a good boy. He was a little angel when kids are shot and we see that one photograph of them on the TV. We know it's horse feathers. We know it's not true. Look, the vast majority of, of black and white crime, I'm sorry, but it's true, blacks committing crimes against whites and not the other way around. Everyone, Governor Scott Walker is now ordering the state patrol to provide extra security at the fair. This after reports of mob violence on the fairgrounds last night. According to witnesses, a large group of black teenagers rampaged through the midway late Wednesday with several fights breaking out. Police say the violence then continued outside the fairgrounds after closing. And there were several attacks that may have been racially motivated. 
Yeah. Now, believe it or not, this was one of the few reports about this incident that would even mention the racial motive when it was obvious, loud, it screamed to everyone who was there that, of course, it was about race. And it happens time and time again. So spare me the trash talk, the lies, the propaganda. The vast majority of people on death row, for example, they're not black, they're poor. Racism, at a systemic level, is dead in North America. A black man has the most powerful job in the world right now, and I am sick and tired of the moaning, the complaining, the lying, and now the, well, the lynching, the lynching in the name of racist injustice. It's all in the past. We've got to move on. We've got to grow up. Racism is obscene. Black people definitely, certainly suffered terribly in the United States. But we no longer live in the 1860s or even the 1960s, but the 21st century. If the US justice system convicts a white man because it is frightened of black people rioting, then all of America's aspiration to equality, equity, fairness, and a colorblind society would have been for naught. And that's tragic in whatever color you look at it. Just when I thought this case couldn't get any more bizarre, the state is seeking third degree murder based on child abuse. I think the man is right. This case is bizarre. It should not have gone to trial in the first place. Ben Shapiro joins us from Los Angeles. Ben, would you agree with that? I, I, I don't think this should even be in a courtroom at this stage. Now, there's no way that any prosecutor worth his salt ever would have brought this case. I mean, when I was in law school, I worked in the L.A. Major Crimes Division of the DA's office uh, over a summer. And I can tell you, this case never would have been brought by any sort of conscionable prosecutor. There is nothing but reasonable doubt in this case. The entire case, Alan Dershowitz pointed this out, and he's completely right. The entire case under Florida law comes down to two questions. One, who started the fight between Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin? And two, who was screaming? In both cases, there is no clue... Who did what? Right. At, at best, there's no clue. Virtually all the testimony says that Trayvon started the fight and that Zimmerman was actually screaming for help. But even if you assume the worst, at best, you have no clue who did any of this, which means that there is nothing but reasonable doubt in this case. And the state knows it, which is why today they tried to leverage in third degree murder as a possible lesser included charge. I mean, they were really trying to boil it. Maybe maybe they'll get them on jaywalking with intent to distribute. I mean, they're, they're throwing as much stuff against the wall as they possibly can in the desperate hope that something will stick in what is a case that never should have been brought into court in the first place. Maybe I'm naive, but I, I assume that the law precedent and the summing up of, of a judge will direct a jury that, no, that there is so much doubt here, there's, there's more than sufficient doubt, that we cannot convict. But is that going to happen? Uh, no, uh, I can't imagine that there would be a jury instruction along those lines. The, the, the defense has already motioned twice for dismissal, saying that no rational jury could find guilt here. Uh, the judge has already refused that twice. This judge um, you know, I, I usually don't rip on judges. I, I would say that this judge has, has shown herself to be somewhat biased towards the prosecution. For example, not allowing in any evidence of Trayvon Martin's prior fighting, um, not wanting to hear about the state's refusal to turn over evidence to the defense, uh, even allowing the state to argue a third degree murder charge before ruling it down. I mean, the, the, these are all moves of a judge that is not particularly happy with the defense team. Hmm. So predictions, please. Uh, well, I mean, it'll go to the jury, obviously. Uh, I think that the jury will acquit. If the, if the jury is going to you know, do anything representing justice, the, the jury will acquit. Although the jury has to be aware that if, there is the, if they do acquit, there is the chance there will be riots. I mean, we've already heard about this. There are rumors that folks are busing into Sanford, Florida in preparation. I talked to Governor Rick Scott's office. They're prepared in case there should be civil unrest. I've talked to the chief of police of Sanford. He said they're prepared in case there's civil unrest and that they've been coordinating with the Department of Homeland Security. Should there be civil unrest? They, they don't expect that. But I mean, today there was a bomb threat outside the civil courthouse across the street from the Zimmerman trial. There are already theories. It was an attempt to draw police officers away from the criminal trial to the civil building and uh, to allow vulnerability with regard to defendant Zimmerman. Well, for the longest time, there have been websites calling for this man to be murdered, for him to be killed, even though he may not have, have done anything wrong. Do you think it is likely, we can't see into, into the minds of the jury, but is it likely that, that their decision that should be based purely on, on pristine justice and legal precedent, but could it be influenced by fear that setting this man free will lead to more people dying on the streets of American cities? 
Well, sure. I mean, that could obviously be something that comes into their mind. So could their futures. I mean, most of these jury members will eventually become public. And do they want to be known as the people who were so racist that they let off the, the child killer, the racist child, child killer, George Zimmerman? This is something that's going to cross every one of their minds. This case never should have gone to a jury. This is significantly worse than the O.J. Simpson case. The O.J. Simpson case, O.J. was rightfully arrested and tried, and then he was wrongfully acquitted based on what was essentially jury nullification. In this case, he was, Zimmerman was wrongfully arrested based on, based on really something that was trumped up by, by the city itself and by the media. And then he was tried based on trumped up charges by the prosecution and by the media. And finally, it's going to go to the jury. So the jury is really the last guardian of, of, of justice here. And we'll have to find out whether the jury has the uh, intestinal fortitude to do justice in this case by acquitting Zimmerman. It's, it's, it's obvious that there is reasonable doubt in this case mm. that, that manslaughter certainly does not even apply. Help me here with the American system. I and mean, if they do convict, there's an appeal, and at appeal at a higher level, that the conviction could not stand. Uh, well, it, it would be interesting to see what would happen on appeal. The, 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 here's the problem. You have to have grounds for the appeal other than the jury got it wrong, right? The, the grounds for the appeal has to be procedural in nature. You have to challenge a judge's ruling, for example, uh, that the Trayvon Martin evidence about his fighting history should have been admitted. And the, the standard of the, the burden to be reversed on appeal is that it would have made a material difference in the trial. Appellate courts are really reticent to reverse lower court rulings, especially on procedural matters. So if, if he's convicted, he will at the very least spend a significant amount of time in prison before an appeals court strikes this down, if an appeals court even would strike it down. This, this is a seminal moment in American history beyond race relations, American justice and, and dignity and the way it's perceived in the rest of the world. Uh, well, we'll bring you back on the show at some point to discuss this because, my golly, uh, my golly, I never thought this would be. And at such a time with a black man as president of the United States, it's all going so terribly wrong. Uh, as always, a pleasure. Thank you, my friend. Thanks so much.